Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy, I am with Inspire Ministries and I am so glad that you have landed on today's video. Today I want to share with you just something from my heart, but not just from my heart, but from my own personal experience. Today I want to share with you five basic things that I feel like you need to do right now if you want to get serious about scripture reading and deepening your relationship with Jesus. So let's just dive right in. In the book of Mark, chapter 4, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He is teaching, and this is one of the things that he says in Mark, chapter 4, verses 21 through 23. And I kind of just want to set up where we are going with the words of Jesus. He gives this illustration. He is talking in a parable about a lamp, and he says this. He says this in Mark 4, 21. Then Jesus asked them, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? Of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where the light will shine. In verse 22, he goes on to say, for everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open and every secret will be brought to light. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Now, if you were a student of Jesus in this day, I can say at least for myself that I would be sitting there thinking, how can I listen and understand? How can I hear and obey what it is that I am reading or studying or listening to if I don't even understand? Yet that was one of the commands, listen and understand. In Mark 4, verse 24, the verse just following this order, Jesus says these words, and it's very interesting. He says this, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given, and you will receive even more. Now, the Passion Translation for this same verse says it like this, Be diligent to understand the meaning behind everything you hear, for as you do, more understanding will be given to you. And according to the depth of your longing to understand, much more will be added to you. Now, think about that for a moment. The more you listen, the more you will receive. In other words, by the measure with which you measure, it will be measured to you. You see, I hear a lot of people say a lot of times to me, I cannot hear from God. I do not hear the voice of God. I do not understand what I read. I do not understand what the Lord would have me to do. And to that, I might as gently as I can ask this question, what is the depth of your longing for him? Let me ask that question again. What is the depth of your longing for Jesus? Jesus asks us to do something interesting, and that is pay attention to what you hear. Isn't that an interesting phrase? Pay attention to what you hear. And this led me down a rabbit trail of investigating a little bit the difference between listening and hearing. And I want you to hear the difference between these two words as it relates to the Webster's Dictionary definition of these words. Now, first of all, to listen means to give attention to, to give attention with the ear, to incline or to attend closely, or to pay attention. The word hearing, though, is this, to perceive with the ear, to learn with the intention to obey. In fact, I was thinking about this the other day. My daughter sometimes will say, are you listening to me or are you hearing me? Sometimes I've heard her say to her husband now, I know that you're listening to me, but are you hearing? In effect, what she is saying is that there is a distinctive difference between listening and hearing, and I need you to hear me. I need you to understand me. I need you to not only give me attention, but to perceive what I'm saying, to listen with the intention to make an action 
after what it is that I'm hearing. So think about that. The more you listen, the more you will receive. And so the question becomes, how are we hearing? How are we hearing? Charles Spurgeon calls this the art of attention. And I love this. Are we leaning in close? Are we listening for his still small voice? Are we tuned in with the spirit? And are we willing to obey? You see, you and I must make good improvement on what he is saying and what he has said. And that we find in the Word of God. You and I must make good improvement on how we are studying, what we are learning in our quiet time, and what we feel as though he is giving us direction on. God lovingly gives more revelation and more knowledge and understanding to those who value what it is that they've already been given. Those who hunger for food will find food. My commentary says that we must, quote, diligently attend to what God is saying in his words, to seek to understand it, to lay it up in our mind and our memory. You see, when I first started getting serious about my walk with Jesus, when I started getting serious about being in his word, and that was about 12 years ago, I did a few things that I did every single day as I was reading. You see, one of the things that I did right off the bat when I sat down to the Word of God is I didn't understand it. I didn't understand one lick of it. But I came to my kitchen table, which was my sanctuary for a good year, and I showed up every day. I came to that table every day, and I did five important things that I want to share with you today. Five things that I believe can set you on the right path for deepening your understanding of the Word of God and enriching your quiet time with Him. The first thing is I begged God to show up and to speak. You see, all throughout my Christian adult life, I had heard people talk about, well, the Lord said this, and the Lord told me this, and this is the direction that the Lord told me to go in. And I never fully understood what that meant. But the truth of the matter was, even as a Christian, I was not in my Bible every single day. And without being in the Word of God, we cannot understand what it is that He wants from us. We cannot understand the direction that He has for our lives. And so what I did every single day when I came to that kitchen table to sit at that table and present myself in front of the Lord and say, you know what, I'm here, would you show up, is I begged Him to speak to me. I actually begged Him to say something, to be that voice that I needed to speak, to show up with me and speak. In fact, one of the things that I did every single day at that kitchen table is I actually pulled out a chair right next to me and I invited the Lord to sit with me in my quiet time every single day. And that, at least for me, was setting myself up to willingly hear and obey what it was that I was reading. The second thing is I asked him to give me a passion for his word. Now this is huge because every single day that I would come, sometimes just willingly admitting this, sometimes I would come and it would be like a chore. It would be something that I had to get done to check off of a to-do list. And I didn't want it to be that. I wanted to actually be given a passion for his word. And so in addition to begging him to show up is I would pray that he would give me a passion for his word, that he would help me to fall in love with it, that would he would help me to not even be able to get enough of it. And I am telling you, that is a prayer that he faithfully will answer to the one who faithfully and lovingly and authentically comes to him to ask him for that passion. The third thing that I did is I humbled myself in obedience to him. I said, you know what, God, I don't know what your word says. I am not clear in my understanding of what this word is trying to tell me, but God, I want to understand it. And not only just understand it in my mind, I want to understand it with my obedience, with my action. I want to actually obey what it is 
is that I'm reading. So in other words, when I come and I start to read about forgiveness and grace and mercy, it's not just reading words on a page. It's not just being inspired that this is the way that Jesus lived his life, but it is asking him to give me the steps that I need to take in order to be like Jesus, in order to obey what it is that I'm reading so that I walk away from this experience with him different and changed and more like Jesus. The fourth thing that I did regularly and still do today is I dig in commentaries and I learn all that I can. You see, the Word of God is alive and it's active. And let me tell you this, it is enough. So for me just to come and sit and read his word, it's enough. For me to be inspired by his words, to, for me to learn all I can about what he wants from me and to make a plan of action to obey is a fantastic thing. But in addition to that, what I like to do is read commentaries, search for sermons, read all I can about a certain passage. So what I will do often is I will read and when I come to one verse that I really love or that I really question or that I really have some some questions about or I want to know more information about, that is when I go deeper. That is when I dig in. I'm telling you the richness that I have found in studying the commentaries, even if it is a Bible that has your commentary down below that gives a certain explanation about the verses that you're reading, dig into those, read those, study those out. That That is where richness can be found. And then the fifth thing that I did regularly, and I still do to this very day, is something that is very dear to my heart, and that is read until you hear his voice. Read until you hear his voice. What do I mean? Well, at the beginning of the year, my daughter and my son-in-law and I set out to read the entire Bible from cover to cover. And so what I started to do is I started to read in Genesis, I went to Leviticus, I read in Deuteronomy, and to be honest with you, some of those books are daunting. They are hard to understand. There is a lot of theological questions that I have when I read those things. But as I sat down to read the scriptures from cover to cover, book to book, I sat down and I paid attention to those verses that felt like God was speaking directly to me about. So what I would do is as I was reading, I would just make a note of that verse that I wanted to study out a little bit further. And I would go back in my quiet times or in my additional extra time that I had to study, whether it be in the morning or the afternoon or the evening, and I would dig into that because I feel like that is God speaking to me. When I'm reading something and it practically leaps off the page or it makes my heart skip a beat, I pay attention to that because that, my friends, that is what I mean by reading until you hear his voice. Read until something just connects in your soul and you know it was almost written right for you at that exact moment in time. You see, one of the things that I did every single day, and I feel like I still do to this day, is I came with a willing heart to build upon the small amount of knowledge that I did have. And as I did that, more was added. And slowly over time, I increased not only in my knowledge of him, but more importantly, in my awareness of his goodness and his radical love and mercy toward me. What you're hearing stems from what you are choosing to chew on and who you are allowing to speak into your life. How you are hearing, it stems from your priorities and your intentions. Here are three things that I want to give you as I wrap up this video. Three basic ways that we hear. Three basic ways is we hear with discrimination, we hear with attention, and then we hear with personal application. So let's go back to discrimination. I want you to look up John 10, 5. Here Jesus is talking about a flock of sheep, and he's talking about how they will attend to or listen to the voice of the shepherd because they're familiar with his voice. John 10, 5 says they won't follow a stranger. They 
do not recognize his voice. So talking about those sheep is like talking about you and I. We hear with discrimination. We hear with the attention to the one that we are familiar with. And when we are in the word of God, when we are reading the scriptures, when we are familiar with how he says things, what promises that he gives in scripture, what kind of direction that he gives, what kind of obedience he requires, then we too hear with that kind of discrimination to say, you know what? That is the voice of Jesus. And I will listen to that voice and I will follow that voice because he is the good shepherd. The second thing is we listen or we hear with attention. Matthew 13, 23 says this, the seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly understand God's word and produce a plentiful harvest. And so it's not just listening to listen, it's listening with intention to do what it says to do. Listening with the intention to be changed by what it is that we are reading. And then the third thing is we hear for ourselves with personal application. Abner, who was a very powerful leader in the Old Testament, he was a very loyal subject to King Saul, was being accused of something in 1 Samuel chapter 3. And this accusation turned him on the administration. And he said this, he said, may God strike me and even kill me if I don't do everything I can to help David get what the Lord had promised to him. So that is the way that we, you and I, sit down with the word of God. You know what? May God strike me dead if I don't do what it is that I need to do. Personal application. I know that's a little bit intense to go that that extra mile that Abner did, but to say, you know what, God, I want to personally apply what it is that I am learning. I don't want to just hear what you're saying. I don't want to just read it for knowledge sake, but I want to read it so that I can be personally transformed, so that I can personally apply what it is that I am reading every single day. So we hear with discrimination, we hear with attention, and we hear with personal application. Three things that you and I, I believe, are to do is we are to hear retentively, desiringly, and practically. We need to learn retentively. Retentively means tending to retain something, having the power to remember or the ability to remember. So we come to the word and we say every single day, God, I want to remember what it is that I'm learning. That is one of the things that's so important for me that as I am learning, as I am studying, I keep a journal with me and I write down all of the things that I'm learning. But not only do I just write them down, I reflect upon them later on. I go back and I review the catalog, if you will. I go back right now, I'm going back to the year 2019 and I'm studying, I'm reviewing all all of the things that the Lord and I studied together in my quiet time in the year 2019. And I'm learning even so much more than I did the first time around. So we hear retentively. The second thing is we are to hear desiringly. Desire is to wish, to long for, to crave, to want. It is a desire that we need to be praying for. God, give me a passion for your word. And then the third thing, again, is practically. We hear practically. Practical or practically means relating to practice or action. It is involving action. It's meaning being engaged or experiencing in practical form. It is working and it is being useful. And so those are the three ways right there that I believe that we need to hear every single day. We need to learn to retain. We need to learn to have a desire for his word and then have it practically apply to our lives. Friends, I think that these things, if you do these five steps that I talked about today, I believe with everything in me that God will increase your awareness of him. He will multiply that quiet time, that effectiveness of that quiet time, and you will be radically changed by your quiet time. And isn't really that all it's about? This isn't about coming to learn more things. This is about experiencing Jesus, spending time with the Holy Spirit in your quiet time every day, coming to his word and saying, I don't know that I have a passion for it. Would you give me a passion 
reading for it. I don't know that I understand the things that I am reading. Would you help me to retain, to desire, and then to practically apply? Friend, I hope that this has been an encouragement to you today. If it has, I would love to know about it. Like this video if you have enjoyed it. Would you subscribe to this channel, become a part of this family? Don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified every single time that I upload content like this. I love your presence here. I am so grateful that you have landed on these videos and that you are a part of this journey with me. And I look forward already to my next video. Until then, I pray that you have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye, friend.